Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Brother Dow from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to preach you today in the wonderful, lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanking Him for another time that we can uh, come together around the Word of God and the message of the hour that was <clears throat> was brought by Brother uh, William Brown. So we're glad today that uh, that we've been included in what God is doing today. And uh, Brother Brown said there was a there was a message for the, for every day and time. And truly, this is the message for this day. But our message is for us to look back and see what God has done because He's fulfilled His promised word of an age. And just as when the disciples went out, uh, their message was all about uh, Jesus Christ and what He had done and His life and ministry and so on. And so, today, as we look back, that's what we are to do. We're to um, give testimony to what God has done uh, in our day. And so, God gives His Word, He comes along, He comes along, and He fulfills His Word, and that is the uh, interpretation of it. So, that is exactly what he's done this day. And then our job is to tell what he has done and what he's accomplished and make sure that uh, the people of God know what he's done. So that's what it's all about. And uh, there's only one great one among us, and that's Jesus Christ. And he... God became flesh, became a man. He was born of a virgin and died to pay the price. And, <clears throat> and the story goes on from there. So uh, there's not another name given under heaven, under heaven, whereby we must be saved. So we thank the Lord for that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, it's a great thing today when we can recognize our message, our day, Lord, that you sent us. So, Lord, we thank you for that, that you've given us eyes to see and ears to hear with, Lord. And, Lord, we pray this morning that as we look into the Scripture and the message, Lord, because we believe that they were God sent to a people upon the face of this earth that could receive it. So Lord, we pray this morning that this would this would go forth and it would go to the people that can receive it, Lord. So we do it that and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let's see. Now I want to give us a little <clears throat> title this morning. And this is where we'll start to kind of work from. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. But I'm going to give this a title. The Carnal Mind versus the Mind of Christ. The Carnal Mind versus, because if there's a verse, they're, they're, one, they're one to the other. Or we say the carnal mind against the mind of Christ. So that's where we're going to start from. And the carnal mind, as we're going to read these scriptures, you're going to find out with the carnal mind, a person, they cannot get uh, anywhere with God. So let's start out in Romans 8, the 8th chapter. We want to read here. About, <clears throat> looks like about the first uh, nine verses, and then we want to go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 and uh, try to put these two together. And then we got some statements 
that Brother Brown made and so on. And we want to kind of see uh, where we're at. All right, so let's look in Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now, and he said, there is therefore now, that means, that means now, right now, no condemnation, no judgment to them which are, 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 are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So something happens that you're no longer walking after the flesh, but you're walking after the Spirit. And when you do this, there is now no condemnation. There's no judgment to you. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and this law that the Spirit of life, it works by faith. There's no other way that it works. It works strictly by faith hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Look here. God gave the law back there, and there was, he knew that nobody could keep it. And it was, what is sin? It's unbelief. And unbelief, what? Causes death. For what the law could not do, so there's no way it couldn't, it, it couldn't do it. Because why? It was because of the flesh. And that it was weak through the flesh. Because the law depended on the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us <clears throat> the law had a righteousness if you could have ever kept it but there's no way that a man could keep it and God proved that through the Old Testament there <clears throat> that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. In other words, they, they think, they regard, they mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, and the things of the Spirit is the Word. The Word and Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. For to be carnally minded is death. Carnally minded is death. Well, my goodness. And death is separation from God. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spiritually minded is life and peace. You're at peace with God. You're no longer His enemy. You've been reconciled. You've been made His friend again. You've become His son, His daughter. Because, okay, because, why? Because, because, because a carnal mind is enmity against God. Now, enmity against God is a carnal mind against, uh, is, he, is it against the great spirit that's, that's the created the world? The carnal mind is at enmity. Let's just check that word, enmity. Enemy. Hatred, odious, hateful, hostile, hating, and opposing another. Used of men as at enmity with God by their sin. Hostile to God's word. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what. 
You can see where that comes from. So, to be carnal-minded is all of those things, and we see it every day. And you know, the thing about where we see it is, now, out in the world, they don't, they don't care one thing about, you can tell them all about the Bible, you can tell them about John 3, 16, and that don't mean nothing. They got signs on the road and signs here and billboards, John 3, 16, and the sinner man runs by and he sees that and he don't even give it a minute, boom, nothing. Because why? Because he's, a, he's got a carnal mind. So the, the carnal mind is enmity against God for it's not subject to the law of God because the law of God is his word. Neither indeed can be. So the only way you can get a man, you've got to change his mind. He's got to change his mind. Something's got to happen. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Look here. If you've been born by a natural birth, there's no way for you to please God because you come here contrary to God to start with. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his that's just as simple as you can put it now keep in here carnal mind versus the mind of Christ. Now you would think, well, the carnal, we've, we've, we've read what the carnal mind is. Well, what do you think the mind of Christ is? It was his mind only to do the Father's will, to do the Word. It said, oh, the Word says this, we got to go do this. Well, that's the same thing today. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. So it says, they have it. I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. And look here. This, this day, this message, this word is the deep things of God. And it's so deep but God brought it so simple that he calls the whole religious world to stumble over it. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. A man acts like a man because he's got a spirit of a man in him. He understands like a man because he's got the spirit of a man in him. God put that there so he would be a man. And so that the woman would be a woman. But <clears throat> looks like nowadays that's all got crossed up. They don't know which one they are. Now we have receive not the spirit of the world. Oh, evidently somebody did because now we're talking about something new here. He says we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, because that's what everybody's looking for, some wisdom. But it, he didn't stop there. But which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the Spirit of God. The natural man. And then the natural man, what does he come with? He comes with a carnal mind. Because the two go together. Natural man, carnal mind. In the flesh, enmity against God. And that's where the natural man, that's why Jesus said, you must be born again. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness. You tell people today, and we don't even have to go to the world, just tell people that are supposedly, they are Christians. Tell them about what God has done this day, and it is complete foolishness to them. Because they come from some group somewhere that's got it all plastered out and figured out. And what you're telling them, just, well, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it can't even fit in their head nowhere. And it's foolishness unto them. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. When I was reading this, I was thinking about it. Now Paul, <clears throat> he's writing this, and he's just not, well, I think I'll put this now. He has been moved by the Holy Spirit. He said, the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. God is using him as that spokesperson writing all these letters and they become part of the Bible. But now listen here. He said, For the spiritual judgeth all things, yet himself is judge of no man. And I was talking about, now you think about Paul, his history. Well, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was so zealous. He was running to and fro and trying to, to lock Christians up and persecute them and everything else. And somebody say, hey, there's old, there's Saul. Well, he was a blasphemer. He was a murderer. He was this, that, and the other. And you think, did, did he pay any attention to that? No, because he knew and he believed the things that he was writing. But the spiritual judges all things, yet himself is judged of no man. And that's the way the believer is today. I don't care, and they don't care, what the world, what the churches, what the religions, and all that says. That makes no difference because he is judged of no man. He's got one judge, and that is Almighty God, and He's done declared him not guilty. So why should I worry about what somebody else is going on about me or somebody else? They ain't got one say in the whole thing. And most of well, you know this, but no, I know one thing. Jesus Christ is Lord. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that they may instruct him? Question. Well, they claim they have because they, they, they try to instruct him today. Oh, they say, well, you, you know, he meant this and he meant that. And he comes out the, the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and they make it into a trinity. Which is absolutely contrary to everything from start to finish, when there's only one God manifested in three offices. 
Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So who hath known the mind of the Lord that they may instruct him? Look here, but but we have the mind of Christ. Something has happened. We have the mind of Christ. We had the carnal mind, but we don't have that because we, we had it because we was born a natural human being by the natural birth and everything from our first parents come right on to us. Our first parents, Adam and Eve, come right on down and on to us. And that's why we were born in sin. Uh, but something's happened. Thank God something has happened. There is now, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. There ain't one thing against the believer. But we have the mind of Christ. Now, <clears throat> I was thinking about this and this, this scripture come to mind because somebody's always trying to keep some, I don't care how good you are, how many years you have been, they'll go back and dig up something if it, that they have to go 50 years to, to bring against you. Now, this is Matthew 12, 31, and 32. This is Jesus speaking. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin, all manner of sin, all manner of unbelief and blasphemy, blasphemy, evil speaking, slander, making light of, Making light of what? Making light of what God is doing. All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But, there's one, but the blas blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be given him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Well, that sounds pretty serious to me. And men, they just stumble right along because they don't have the mind of Christ. They've got a carnal mind and they blaspheme and everything else. And Jesus said, now, he said, blasphemy could be forgiven. He said, all manner of sin and blasphemy. But he said, when you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Now, <clears throat> They didn't even know anything about the Holy Ghost. They, all they knew was what was going on in the temple. Now he, he qualified that. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But Brother Brown says, when that Holy Ghost comes again and does the same thing, and you speak against that, you have cut yourself off. Wonder how many, many, many people today have cut themselves off without a hope and don't even know it. So, so, but the thing I want you to get out of this, he said, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Now, <clears throat> I just <clears throat> picked out a, a few quotes where Brother Brown was talking about uh, the, the carnal mind. And this was one that was in the, the, the fourth seal there in Jeffersonville. It said, now, Esau and Jacob, 
Now Esau was a religious man. He didn't claim to be an unbeliever. He believed the same God that, that Jacob did, the same God that his daddy did. But he was a shyster, or excuse the expression, he was just no good. Now, as far as being morally, he was, he was really better and moral acting man than Jacob was. But you see, he didn't think, oh, what's that birthright got to do with it? And he sold his birthright to Jacob, see. But Jacob, he didn't have big things like Esau did. He didn't have the inheritance he did. But there was one thing Jacob wanted was that birthright. He didn't care how he had to get it. He was going to get it. And God had respect to him. And then that's the same thing today with the natural man, carnal mind, worldly minded. Okay, so you just compare these two and you're going to see the perfect example of the natural man, the carnal mind, the worldly minded. <clears throat> Well, I belong to the state church. I belong to this church. I belong to that. That is the carnal mind, the natural man. He belongs to something. And he says, that don't have one thing to do with it. Not a thing. And then we have people today. Well, I belong to the message. Well, you do. And do you follow the message? Do you believe what the messenger said? Are you, are you still hung up on some old denominational doctrine that you brought over from the dark age and calling it the message? Huh. Look here. All this, 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 this claim don't mean a thing if you don't have the goods. So this is a perfect example. Well, you think, well, my goodness, Esau, he's, he's a great man. He's out hunting. He's, he's loved of his father and all these things, and he's taken care. And here old Jacob is running around try, trying to, all he, he can work is that birthright. I've got to have that birthright. And that's the way a believer is today. They got to have that birthright. They got to have the new birth. And they don't care what they've got to do to get it. Now, I've got a couple of little statements here out of the third Exodus there in Jeffersonville 63. Now notice, God in doing this, yet the people didn't know it. The carnal mind was going with reason. God is... God is now calling a spiritual exodus where he called a natural exodus for the people. He is calling a spiritual exodus today to what? His elected, only to his elected. Now he's calling a spiritual exodus and it's not to the world. It's not to the world of religion. It is only to his elected. He said, the carnal mind always goes to reason. Well, that's the only thing it can go to. It don't have no other place to stand. Because that's what it does. It always what reasons against the word. Oh, well, there's no way that could be. There's no way this, that, or the other. Yeah, that's where they go. Because they have that carnal mind that is against God. It's another little statement. He said, but Caleb and Joshua seen the promise. And he's talking about when they got to Kadesh Barnea there. They didn't care about who was over there, the wall cities, the giants, or nothing else. God has done said, I give you the land. Go and get it. 
So they wasn't worried about all that. And the other guys, all they could see, oh, the wall city is near giants over there, and we look like grasshoppers. Oh, and that's what the mind they had was a grasshopper mind, a carnal mind. But, but Caleb and Joshua seen God's promise. And look here, there is some real true believers that have seen God's promise fulfilled today. And they're going to get it. He said, we're more than able to do it. Why? They were looking. God said, I give you the land. See, the carnal mind don't get it. It didn't get it then and it won't get it today. But the spiritual mind does get it. When God gives a promise and He comes along and fulfills that promise, they have something that they can see with. And that's just a little short thing out of un the, His unfailing words of promise there in Phoenix 64. God does it so mysteriously. That just simply sets the carnal mind plumb out of its orbit. He does it so mysteriously. And he just comes in and he does it and he don't explain it and everything else. And the carnal mind is going, whew, whew, whew. what? It can't think no more. Yeah, they just can't, they can't think that. Why? Because they're working as a natural man with a carnal mind and the spiritual things don't even compute. And that's what, well, there's just no way with that kind of mind for them to get it. And God fixed it that way. Because the, <clears throat> the only way that you can, that you can receive this You've got to have something on the inside that we'll call it, you've got to have that predestinated, you've got to be that predestinated seed. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, you just think about the carnal mind now. When you see all the things that the people do, I don't care if it's this natural Oh, everyday sin and debauchery, or if it's right in the church and it's re religious sin. Same thing. It all comes from the carnal mind. And look here. Oh, the carnal mind. He can be so religious. Well, Balaam, he had a carnal mind. And he was so religious. And Brother Brown said fundamentally he was just as fundamental as Moses was. Same sacrifice, same thing. Worshiping and, and sacrificing to the same God. But could not recognize God's people. So fundamental? Oh yeah, fundamental is good. If you've got the mind of Christ... But being fundamental with a carnal mind will get you nowhere. You see how Balaam, what he wound up. Now, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. And there in Jeffersonville 63. Then we stand justified in the presence of God. As a drop of ink dropping into a tub of bleach. You'll never find the stain of the ink no more. It went somewhere. It'll never come back again. And when a man is truly redeemed, that predestinated seed that sees it and accepts it, his sins are demolished. It's gone. It's separated. It dropped into the ink of the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's never to be remembered. 
God forgets it, and he stands as a son of a daughter of God in the presence of God. Amen and amen. Now we are the sons of God. Not we will be. We are. Now we are redeemed. And it's been some years ago, uh, one night at the church, I, mean, I probably read this or something about it, and, uh, and I took just a, a water bottle and filled it up with bleach, and I got me a little some of this uh, black uh, India ink and a little dropper, and I went to the church. And I said, um, this is what Brother Brown talked about with this ink. And so I opened the bottle that had the, the bleach in it, and I took that little dropper and I dropped a, a drop of ink in there, and as soon as it hit me, it went, whoosh, it dis disappeared. And that's what your sin does when it hits the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't find it. It's gone. All manner of sin and blasphemy. It is gone. And you can't find it. But the, do the people believe that? No, they don't believe that. They'll run back. If it takes 50 years to depend something on you, they'll dig it up. But we're not worried about them. We've, we're judged of no man. So he said, now we are redeemed. And now, not only, he said, we were redeemed at the cross. But he could not come and collect us till after the church ages. And then when the church ages, down comes the angel. And the seventh angel is on earth at time of this coming. And he comes and, and takes the book, the book. In Revelation 5, he comes and takes that book and the prophet said it was a book of redemption and he come to claim what he had redeemed. And you tell that to the people that say, oh no, what's going on here? There's no way. 63? Carnal mind. It just sends him into another orbit. Well, I don't care what orbit they in. We're over here with the mind of Christ. We know what God has done and is doing. And it's not through some kind of a wisdom program of man. This is all by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the mind of Christ. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus also be in you. So, but he said now, and it's never to be remembered, God forgets it. And this can only happen one way, and that's through the new birth. Because if you come here a natural man with a carnal mind and you have got to get rid of that to get the mind of Christ. Yeah. Now, I'm going into some statements here that are, uh, you could say they were kind of touchy whichever way people want to go, but we're just going to read what the prophet said. And he don't, mince, he don't mince any words about it. He just lays it out. And he never, look here, this is in the Invisible Union. There in uh, November, evidently it's November 25th. It was supposed to have been the Thanksgiving Day or Thanksgiving weekend that he's down in Shreveport, 1965. Now this is getting right close to the time that he is going to leave the scene. And he's not in the tabernacle. He is right down there in Shreveport and he's not mincing any words. He is, he is come and he is laying it out. And he titled this, The Invisible Union of the Bride of Christ. 
And that's what I always say. They say, well, you know, we haven't been married yet. Well, according to him, if it's an invisible union, I guess they think we're going to march up to the altar somewhere and we'll go through the vows and all that. That's not. That's carnal. That's the carnal mind. Now, <clears throat> invisible union, Shreveport, 1965, November. Now, your old book is gone. Your old book. Well, what is my old book? Your old book is your natural life. Your natural life. To be a natural person. To have a carnal mind. Now, the old book is gone. With your old union. Now your name. In your old. In your has been transferred. Now you say. Do you mean to tell me. My old book. Yes that's what I'm talking about. He's talking about. Because no doubt. The people say. Well, now what's, what's, he, what's he talking about here. My old book. So. Do you mean to tell me my old book God put in the sea of his forgetfulness? You stand perfectly before God. Because he said I'm going to have a church and it's going, not going to have a spot or a wrinkle or a blemish or anything. So look here. We have come to that place but you have to believe that you are now your name is now in the new book not the book of life because look here he said God is is about life and, and all the life he puts in a book but that's just the book of natural life. Now your name is, is in the new book. Not the, the book of life, but the Lamb's book of life. What the Lamb redeemed. Not the old book of your natural union, but your new bride. Hallelujah. Your new life is in the Lamb's book of life. Your marriage certificate. Ooh, my. Where your true eternal germ from the beginning takes hold. Mm -hmm. Then it was just it was just waiting and waiting and waiting for this day. He said, now you're not only forgiven, but you're justified. He says, glory, justified. Romans 5, 1 said, yea. Romans 5, 1 said, therefore being justified by faith. So he said, now you're not only forgiven, because we just read where Jesus said, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven. So, well, I won't, I'll just, let's, let's go on with this here. Oh, he said, so now, therefore being justified, still in this invisible union, look up the word, the word don't, mean forgiven. The word means justified. It don't mean you're forgiven. Well, my goodness. That's a, that's a powerful word. Because you would think to be forgiven be, would be one thing. But now, justified, it don't mean forgiven. Well, what does it mean? For instance, you heard I got drunk 
and done some evil things and everything. Then you come around and say to me, you found out I didn't do them. And you come around and say, Brother Brown, I forgive you. Forgive me. I never done it in the first place. So you just heard it, but I never done it. So you don't have to forgive me. Now, if I did do it, I'm guilty, but you could forgive me and I wouldn't be guilty, but yet I'm not just justified because I actually done it. But the word justified is though you never done it. My, how, how can that be? Justified is though you never done it. And, and, and maybe in your own mind, you, you, can, you can think back, well, I, I remember. But just think about this. You remember, but God does not. He sees you perfect. And the, oh yeah, and all the people back there, they remember it too. And all they do, they remember it, they will hold it against you. They will never forget it. Because that's how the devil works. He's always bringing accusations. He's always accusing. And that's why you have to know where you are standing. And most people don't really know. <clears throat> so he said, it's just like justified as though you never done it. Amen. It's not even regarded at all. Now listen, how is it done? Now, how, how do I get this justification? How is it done? In God's book of the sea of forgetfulness, your old book and marriage is divorced and dead. It's not even in the memories of God. Amen. You say, well, how can that be? Well, now we as humans, we can forgive. But we can't forget. We can forgive, but we can't forget. But God can forget all about it just as it never was. And that is true justification. He said, you, it's not even in the memories of God, you are justified. Therefore, being justified, it was accused. You was accused. You never done it in the first place. The old union is in the sea of God's forgetfulness. You wasn't married to it to begin with. He, the bridegroom, bore your shame himself for you in your place. He took your place for you were predestinated for him to be his bride. Before the foundation of the world, the Bible said so, you are the predestinated seed. The, the predestinated seed. Now, and I want you to, Brother Brown <clears throat> has told us in a couple of places, he said, after those seals, after those seven seals were opened, the Bible became a new book. What do you mean became a new book? 
Not the, not the writing changed. The understanding changed. He said, we have the perfect, the perfect interpretation with divine vindication after the seals because it was everything was supposed to be uncovered. And it was uncovered if the people can believe it. But if they're trying to do this with a carnal mind, the natural man with a carnal mind, oh, he, he, he said, well, you know, uh, the Bible said even the, the devil believes and trembles and you think he's going to be saved? No, he's got one thing waiting on him. What is it? It is the lake of fire. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. And if it was prepared for that, it's going to be used for that. There's no doubt about it. So, he said, that, and, and you can see, if you've got, a, if you've got the mind of Christ and, and you're reading these messages and the mind of Christ is, is with you and starts to open this, you can see that, look here, he's never said this before. Justify. Just as though you never done it. Hmm. <clears throat> now let's go a little bit further in this invisible union. Now, how did you come to do this? You were deceived into it by your first marriage to your adulterous parent, Eve. It's no fault of your own. Now, look here. Whoa. Look here. We were, just, we were just born here. What had happened had happened thousands of years ago. And what had happened had fell upon the human race. Everybody was now going to be born in sin. But with all of that, God had a plan. And all of that was just going to bring out all that He wanted to bring out. All that was in Him, His attributes, would be displayed. And that's what the whole thing is about. So, you were deceived into it by your first marriage to your adulterous parent. It's not your fault, but your natural birth. But no, by your natural birth. So you want you wonder how how did I get this way? You just come here by your natural birth. You come in here in this condition, and it all just piled down on you. You come after Eve, who committed adultery. That's the reason you was born an adulteress. You're a sinner to begin with, that's right. You were deceived into it. You had no, no, you ain't, it ain't your fault. You never did it. Because that little germ that was in you was to be you before the foundation of the world. God put your name in the Lamb's book of life. So, before we ever got here, our name was already in the Lamb's book of life. <clears throat> the book that He bought and paid for. He the bridegroom took away your saint, your shame <clears throat> and put it in the sea of forgetfulness by the washing of the water of the word and the blood of life. That's what the Bible said. 
your first husband that you were married to, to the world, the anointed bridegroom, which foreordained you, has washed you by the washing of the water. He said, by the church congregation says, no. That don't sound right, does it? No, you might find that in some almanac, but it's not in God's Bible. By the washing of the water, by the word, in the word, see, you are standing completely justified as though you never did it at the beginning. This is my message to the church now. He says, as we go off the air, just a minute, you are standing, if you're standing on God's word, with God's word, every amen, every jot, every little tittle, where you're standing. I'm trying to tell you to, to pull away from them shucks. Now, what is the shucks? It's the denomination. They were just carriers. And that shuck, that Pentecostal shuck, come along here and protected the seed until it got full where it could be a harvest time. And he says, get away from the shuck. Shuck time is over. This is, this is seed time. This is word time. This is Christ time. Pull away from them shucks and get out here in the wheat where you can get right before the sun. He said, I hear the combine coming. You're standing complete. Keep saying that over and over and over again. Justified like you never did it in the first place. Hallelujah. Talk about a thanksgiving. He said, I feel real good. I'm more thankful for than that than anything I know of. You are the pure, virtuous, sinless bride of the Son of the living God. Every man and every woman that's born to the Spirit of God and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and believes every word of God stands as though you never sinned in the first place. You are perfect. The blood of Jesus Christ. How can you? So he keeps saying over and over again, we're complete, we're perfect, we're justified, just as we never done it. <clears throat> now, this works as faith. This is a down in report, and he picks this up again the next night. Works as faith expressed. He said, like my little eagle last night, he knew when he heard that scream of the mother eagle, there's a lot of difference between that and the cluck of the hen, see? Because he was an eagle from the egg. Not, he wasn't made an eagle right then. He was always an eagle. And a Christian always was. That's the reason the divorce, when you're divorced because you were trapped into it. By your first parent, Adam and Eve, you become a sinner by nature. You didn't want to be, but now you heard the gospel and faith comes by hearing, revelation comes by hearing. There's a little, there's a little something inside of you, another man sitting right by you say, oh, I don't believe that stuff, nonsense. I don't believe that, nothing to it. Nothing to that. Well, evidently, he was not an eagle. He liked the cluck of the hen. And there's a lot of people today that they're claiming to be eagles, but they're, they're eating, they're feeding on chicken feed. That's, that's just the truth. Because the things that they were feeding in the feeding on in the barnyard, they still continue to feed on and they claim in the message. And it, it just won't work. 
It is contrary one to the other. It is a total different diet. This is spiritual food in due season, and that is natural food out of a dark age. But you are what you eat. Mm. So you're building denominational cells rather than a word cell, word on top of word on top of word. So he said, now you become a sinner by nature. Look here, there's nothing you can do about it. Boom, you're here. But look here, your name was in God's book, the Lamb's book. And he's coming to get you, and he's going to make you perfect. Now, <clears throat> so he said, we were trapped into it. Well, tell you what, that was a pretty good trap. And... The only way you could get out of that trap, you had to be born again by the water and the Spirit. You had to come to a new birth. You had to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And then Paul said, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. And if you've had that, you can say amen because you've experienced that. No doubt about it. Now, <clears throat> going right down to the end. This is something that Brother Brown uh, <clears throat> had put in the communion message there in 1965, December the 12th. And as far as I know, this is the last message he ever preached. So this was in Tucson, 1965, and he makes this statement. And he said, now what was it? There was another William Brown. See, a little spot of eternal life down there from the genes of God, the Word of God that was placed in there. Each one of you can think of similar things. See, it was working. Then I'd look up at the trees and think, Leaf, I seen you fall off last year. And why are you back there again? Where'd you come from? What brought you here? See, it was that eternal life working in the body. Then one day as I walked on, that voice talking, talking said, Don't never smoke or drink and so forth. And the young fellas and all got older, see, there was something moving. But yet all at once I looked up and said, I'm not the son of Charles and Ella Branham. That's that natural birth, natural life. There's something calling like my little eagle. I'm not a chicken. There's something up yonder somewhere. Oh, great Jehovah. Whoever you are, open up. I want to come home. There's something in me calling. Then I was born again. That little life that was laying there, the life of the water poured upon it, and then it began to grow. Now that old life was forgiven, put in the sea of God's forgetfulness, never to be remembered against me no more. See? Now we stand justified as though we never had sinned in the presence of God. Now, we never done it. We stand justified just as we never done it. Now, in, in Galatians, the fifth chapter, it gives the works of the flesh and the works of the of the Spirit. Now, I'm going to run through these real quick. 519. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Now, you know the works, and you know why you got works of the flesh. Because you come here a natural man, a flesh man, with a carnal mind. And you went to it just like a duck to water. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, 
uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, and heresy, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, my goodness. We was all guilty. But there's got to be a way. Now, on the other side, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And that, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. And we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay, now, your old book, that he took and whew, your old book of your natural life, your natural birth, your natural, natural, natural. What did he do with it? He threw it and put it in the sea of God's forgetfulness. Now, I want to, which Sin did he not take care of? Come on, tell me. Which one? He said, they're all your old book of your natural life. It, whew, gone. It's in the sea of God's forgetfulness. Now, you're justified just like you've never done it. Well, which one's left? All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven. And now it's not only forgiven, it is just all manner. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Well, what is the sin that nobody can be forgiven for? If you was a thief, you can be forgiven for that. If you was a robber, you can be forgiven for that. If you were a murderer, you can be given be forgiven for that. If you was an adulterer, you can be forgiven for that. If you was a fornicator, you can be forgiven for that. Everything you can't be forgiven but one thing. The one thing evidently in this flesh that you can never be forgiven for is your marriage. Oh, no. He didn't take care of that. Oh, well. He took care of everything else and left that hanging out, I guess. That's contrary to the Scripture and is contrary to what the prophet has brought us. They say, oh, oh, this man, you know, uh, uh, 30 years ago, he got married and then he got divorced and, and, and now and now he's a preacher. And there's no way he can't preach. Uh, he said, we're judged of no man. And then this poor woman, she, when she was 19 years old, she married some, some uh, handsome guy and, and it didn't last but six months. Oh, she can no, she can never be married again. So evidently, as far as the people are concerned, there's only one thing that the people can't be forgiven for, and that is your marriage. But that's contrary to what he has said. And the people, they won't have it no other way. But 
He said, and you're justified just like you never did it. All of that has been done away with. Your old book is gone and it's in the sea of God's forgetfulness. And you stand perfect in the presence of God. Now, that's what he said. So, let's just, let's just take what he said about it. If he was God's prophet, God's mouthpiece, God bringing us the word for our age, let's just stay with that. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you, thank you for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus because you have made us free from the law of sin and death. You have taken that old book and you have done away with it. And now we stand before you perfect, Lord. And it's all because of what you've done. And it was all about what you've done and your will to do it for us. So, Lord, this day we give you praise and honor and glory. And we give it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for what you've done for us in this day. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.